Hello YouTube, this is Yuan. Uh, I wanted to kind of do a video after a short break. I wanted to show some image I took of the Rosette Nebula, some data I captured last year. This is one of my favorite targets. I've imaged it in many focal lengths. I recently did a video on it with a larger 12-inch trust tube uh, GSO telescope that um, I took, I think, back in 2021. Uh, this is taken with the Hunters, uh, Riccardi Hunters, 200mm uh, uh, F3, so 600 millimeter focal length. Now, um, the data was from a time when the telescope wasn't perfect. It still needed more mechanical and uh, mechanical changes uh, in collimation, in tilt, and alignment, and so forth. Um, not the easiest, but once it's done, it's really good. So let's take a look at what we have. This is the telescope. Really amazing looking telescope. Uh, relatively heavy for the size. I think it's 25 plus pounds. It takes two counterweights, so about 40 pounds to balance it. Uh, it might be the massive uh, Los Mandi. Uh, I think it's a 17 inch dovetail that I have on it, but it's worth it's worth it because it's easy to balance and to um, um, put onto the mount. Um, I'm using a small William Optics guide scope in this case, uh, ZW174 Puck, which is this little camera. To guide uh, QHI 600 photographic mono uh, chroma filters inside the filter wheel from QHY and the Sato low profile 3.5 inch focuser, amazing 10 millimeters thick, very, very good. I think it actually, sorry, it's 25 millimeters thick, but still an inch thick for a focuser and it's very, very precise. I It kind of also looks good color wise because it's all red. Um, this is the iOptron 120 EC2. I swear I did not buy them according to the colors. This is just how they are. Uh, and um, this is the setup I have. Again, this is a telescope I bought. Somewhat of a lemon, broken, with problems in collimation, tilt, fungus on the mirror, and so many other problems. Uh, but thanks to my friend Jim, we turned it around. He fixed the alignment and collimation and got it to me almost perfect. I did some final tweaks on the tilt using uh, the four corners imaging method inside the SkyX, where you can see the four corners live, make tweaks, and the stars uh, form and deform based on those. That's how I adjusted tilt. The telescope has incredible mechanics. I haven't touched it in six months. I've taken it in and out. When it was raining, it never changed any of the collimation that I could see. The images still look great. The star size is perfect. It works with a full frame, which is not a small feat. Uh, in comparison, if you were to get a Rasa, which is slightly faster, I'm sure that make a big difference. Um, an eight inch will not cover anything close to a full frame. The only thing that would cover a full frame is an 11 inch, but it doesn't take a filter wheel. So it's mostly for color cameras. If you want to do narrow band, good luck with that. You have to change filters by hand. You have to cover your lights when you're taking flats. There's and the the mechanics are just cheap. It, it is a cheap telescope, plasticky, not even close to the quality of this. The reason I say that is because if you buy a used Honda's, they're about five thousand dollars. I used eleven inches, about three to five, three to four thousand, very close. But the Honda's will blow it out of the water. Star size, it's actually much better. Uh, I had a friend who was a skeptic. And now he is convinced how good these are. And he has a large collection of telescopes. So perfect telescope if you can find one used. If you want to buy it new, it's up to you. But I cannot say enough great things about this telescope. It doesn't look like it's new, but it's fine. It does the work, and that's what I care about. Now let's move on to the data, the Rosette Nebula that I captured. The Rosette Nebula is in the Monoceros constellation in the sky. It's really behind Orion. It's a very beautiful object. Uh, I have about 21 hours of data, seven, six, seven per channel. I have to go look, uh, go look at my um, stacking details, and I'll put the actual numbers in the description. This is the sulfur, really nice, clean data. But this is where alignment really sucked. You see, the stars are not perfect. They they range from slightly deformed to weird shapes, uh, and even worse, tilt and miscollimation. Uh, can make a telescope look pretty bad. As you can see across the field, they form stars. And it was it was really maybe only, I think, three or four pixels off when it comes to measurements. Not a lot, but with very fast telescopes, you can kind of see it. 
I was also fighting some weird uh, effects, maybe from flats or maybe from um, the, uh, maybe some fog or something or some clouds. You can see there's weird lines here. Um, nevertheless, this is the sulfur. Looks really good. It's flat fielded well, except for these weird things that I don't know where they came from. Even the oxygen is, is good. You can see oxygen has similar to different lines. I believe it's probably some clouds that did this, but I, I do not know. I usually check my stacks to look at sky background and other things so that this doesn't happen, but this slipped to the cracks. It's fine. I don't think it's going to be that bad. Lastly, HA. Yeah, I mean, this is a hydrogen in space. There's always breathtaking the amount of data this year uh, in a stack. The star size is decent. There's issues with these, but thanks to advancements in that Russell Cromon made with uh, the uh, blood exterminator, the star size is going to be fine. And I'm going to get some extra detail from the deconvolution. And I don't have to spend time doing anything like a PSF or any other masks. So pretty good. Now time for stacking. Regular SHO image. I didn't do any fancy luminosity, luminance um, layers, but the details are great. As you can see, the block Bach globals are here, really nice. There's another formation that I'm imaging with a larger telescope um, right now, which is this little formation here. It looks really dramatic and really a beautiful stack. Couldn't ask for more. This is what I applied blood exterminator. I, I kind of try to fix the halos as much as I could, but again, a very fast telescope. I had some baffling issues here. Um, it was the best I could do, and I'm actually really happy with it. Could have been better, but anything could always be better. After I um, stacked it, I stretched it. I Sorry, I did the blood exterminator first, then I stretched it, removed all the green. Um, and then I separated the stars out. So let's go to the next step. Um, so this was the green removed, and these are the stars. They look pretty good. Um, I'm actually trying a new method for adding the stars back in by James Lamb, um, a pixel math formula that's actually really well uh, thought through. I'll put the link in the description. It's actually pretty amazing. And thank you, James. Keep it. Keep up the great work. Um, there is some kind of reflection that was coming from oxygen in here. Um, this my my primary baffle tube was not um, covered with a special flocking material to reflect all um, outside light, so that's why it's pretty normal. I've had it before, and um, after that I did get it fixed. So I don't think this year I'll have this problem. The weird patterns in sulfur and oxygen are barely visible. I don't think there'll be a problem. I can probably mask them out. So these are the stars. This is the star less image. I use star uh, exterminator to pull the stars out. Then I applied a couple of S curves, some saturation. After that, I did a mask to mask the center and I applied the uh, uh, HDR multi-transform with nine layers to pull back the details from the center. And then that was it. I pulled it into Photoshop for color mixing. Let's look at the final result and see what it looks like. This is the final one with the stars, a color mixing and some textures that I usually apply in Photoshop. Um, with the star field that I had, I could never imagine getting such a good result. Now, again, using the pixel math formula that James Lab wrote, um, it is really good. The stars actually look impressively well compared to what I used to do and my basic methods. So it's important to look at other people and learn from their advancements. And that's why this community is so great. We all help each other, push each other, and in the process, create some stunning images. Um, I'm going to post this around on social media. We'll see what people say. Rosette Nebula has been called many things. The skull and bones, although I don't see any. The space rose, that actually might makes more sense if this was the stem and this was the rose. But Let's look at the starless image. This is where I think you can appreciate the amount of nebulosity in this object. It's actually not far from the um, cone nebula or the Christmas tree nebula. Um, if you were to do a large mosaic or use a smaller focal length telescope, you could probably get them both. For me, I like to do mosaics and I like aperture. The bigger the primary emitter, the happier I am. Um, so it's pretty nice. I'm really happy with the starless image. I am probably going to end up posting this more. Uh, we'll see. I need to do a, a 
a b test with my wife see which one looks better she's usually the expert and again the nebulosity the color the kind of drama that this nebula shows it's really a, a an a, um, a art piece on its own so pretty happy with this image i look forward to hearing your comments your feedback and i will try to do a video showing um, the process that I've slightly changed of using the pixel map star integration method. And if I have time, I'll try to do that um, in the next coming days. But um, I'm excited to see what people think about this. Thank you for watching. And until next time, clear skies.